Yeah, this is a, there's also data, um, this is a picture of the guy from uh, Mythbusters, right? He took a picture once of his car and he said, hey, all right, everybody, I'm, he's tweeting, hey, everybody, I'm off to work now in my truck, right? But he had his GPS setting on his phone. And in one moment, he revealed where he lived, what car he drove, and that when he was not home. Kind of scary, right? Well, that's, that's, that's a lot of data embedded in things that we just do naturally, okay? And so, um, on one side, you might think, okay, well, that's, that's really creepy. On the other hand, you can imagine that the, there's so much motivation to, to exploit that, right? I mean, if, if you're on the other side, if you're in, in, in the organization, whether it's for profit or to help people, you want to use as much information as possible to achieve that, uh, a certain outcome or goal. Um, I'll tell you a story. Um, I once had, uh, when I was younger, I had like a sports car and I had rims. Oops, whoa. And I had rims. And these rims were really nice. And they were, they were uh, you, know, you do the whole thing where you lower the car. You, anyone do that? You can admit it. OK. <laughs> uh, back, oh, back in the day, it was really cool. You, know, you put the big spoiler on, you had the rims. And, 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 and um, uh, it was the wintertime, so I had these rims stored in a locker. And someone broke in in the wintertime, the locker, stole the rims. OK, so this is in, inside a condo, right? There's security, right? There's cameras. So when the security camera said, OK, we know what happened between, you know, in the 90-day in the span between here and here. And we think it was an inside job. Can you, can you figure it out, right? What happened? They couldn't dig up the video. Even though they had all the videos, it was all captured, the security guy said to us, look, you know, it's all this back, this will date me, it's all VHS tapes. You probably just don't even know what VHS is, right? It's all VHS tapes and, you know, they don't actually have a guy who knows how to go through this video quickly. So I'm sitting at home every night and watching through the videos to find the guy who broke into the locker to get your rims. <laughs> So, you know, we ultimately we gave up on it, right? So even though we collected the data, we had no way to analyze that tape to determine when someone broke in and stole those rims. So, um, but the technology exists now, right? It's all digital. And I will tell you that there are actually analytics that allow us to look at every video frame of every camera to determine when something happened, when someone exited a scene, when someone entered a scene. I can even tell, we even have technology now that says, Tell me when a white car passes this frame. In fact, on our cloud, there's like an API for this. You can upload your photos and say, give me all the photos that have white sandy beaches. And I'll tell you that. You know, with, with some accuracy, right? It's all machine learning based. So um, the ability, so this, the, 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 what I'm trying to say is, you know, big data now, it's not that we didn't have the data before. Big data now is interesting because we have the ability to analyze it, okay? And it's cost effective to analyze it. Okay, so I'll talk about one more example here, which is um, streaming data. So data doesn't have to be just big. It can be fast too, right? So uh, what we're showing here is um, we'll call real-time analytics. Um, the InfoSphere stream is just a product name, but I'm not gonna plug product today. I just want the whole, the general concept of streaming is I've got some input source on the left-hand side, and each of these are emitting events, right, in real time. And if you think about, there's many examples where by the time I receive the information, if a certain number of days have gone by, or hours, or minutes even, that data is useless to me, right? If I'm trading based on stock movements, if I get it three seconds later, versus when another trader is getting it much sooner, you know, I, it's, it's not that useful to me, right? The reason why when you get stock quotes, it goes delay 15 minutes because they know it's useless to you. You gotta pay for up-to-date information, right? Well. What we have now is technology where we actually break the event stream into, into you know, segments, right? And each segment does like one or two simple things. And you can chain them together, these streaming events, and break them apart. So in this example here, we're splitting the input into two, like a, like a, like a stream water flow, right? And then, and then each of those do something, and we can join them back together as well. So you can see up here, we're joining them together. We can join data sets together to get some analytics. We can compute things like rolling averages, you know, um, rolling standard deviations, looking for min and maxes and seeing if you are, you know, getting out of the, the normal range. We can uh, deploy machine learning models into this kind of thing. Um, 
And, and, and then we can also decide, you know, all this data being generated, I don't have to store it all. I can analyze it before storing it. I can analyze it as it's going across the wire. And I don't have to store it. I can actually get value out of the data, and I can decide, I'm only going to store bits of it. Everything else, I'm going to discard. Right? And, and so this gives us an ability to look at tremendous amounts of data without the cost of storing it unless I want to store something interesting. Okay? So that's streaming data. Now, this is deployment architectures. We can, don't need to get into that, but basically we can, given the design, we can package them up into deployable code that you can then deploy into a grid. And then that, that is resilient to failure. Won't get into that today, unless you want to. So I'm gonna show a quick video. This is kind of an oldie but a goodie. So let's see if I can. This is a baby. A baby generating data in a neonatal ward. Every heartbeat, every breath, every anomaly, from over a thousand pieces of unique information per second, helping doctors find new ways to detect life-threatening infections up to 24 hours sooner. On a smarter planet, analyze the data and you can predict what will happen faster. So you can do what they're doing in Toronto and build a smarter hospital. Let's build a smarter planet. Okay, so let me tell you what's happening in this baby. The baby is emitting lots of information. And um, when I was uh, visiting my friend who had a preemie baby, six weeks early, I think it was, um, we would walk through the nursery and, and the, the, he would show me, okay, look here, here's the nurse, they're here 24 seven, they're capturing all this information about the baby. And you hear all these beeping machines, you know, measuring heart rate and oxygenation levels and all that kind of stuff. And, and I go, so he showed me the information. It was a, a clipboard with hourly readings of the data of the baby, okay? So what's the tragic thing about that, right? Everything looks normal, but we're collecting thousands and thousands of events every day on this baby, but it gets, amount, it gets aggregated into hourly handwritten notes about what happened to the baby, right? And the story here is that actually happened in the University of Ontario, UOIT, can't say the whole name. Um, we actually ran this project where we took all those beeps on all those machines and we're running, we're capturing all of them. And then we're running analytics on it. And then we could actually predict whether the baby was gonna get sick uh, within, with a 24 hour lead time, okay? And this is stuff that would have been missed if you captured hour by hour. Because what we found was that when the baby uh, maybe skipped a heartbeat or skipped a breath, you would never capture that in your clipboard, okay? And, and so uh, that is now rolling out like nationwide now, I, I think. It's, it's been some time now and a, a very successful. Uh, and so that's, uh, you know, big data is saving babies. Um, yeah, big data. So total uh, four hours before any sign of trouble. You know, the thing is when, when, when a preemie is sick, they have to draw blood. And I think it's something like they got 40 milliliters of blood through the whole body. They gotta draw 5% of it every day to do the analysis, see if they're getting sick or getting better. Um, so it, it, it's a really big deal that they don't have to do this. In fact, they don't have to draw the blood and they can predict that something bad is happening before it actually happens. What year was that? This is probably around 2000, 2011, 12 is my guess. Yeah, like I said, it's an oldie and a goodie. Right, so like all those things, right? 7,200 beats per hour, 2,000 breaths per hour, all that written down is, oh, here was the average for the hour written down. Okay, one more example, and then I promise we'll be done on this section. Um, so this is the city of Dublin, uh, working with IBM Research, and the city of Dublin has some 500 buses on the road at any given point, and they had GPS devices on them. So they thought, can we learn something from this data? They normally just discard it, right? Can we learn something from this data to understand traffic patterns, to optimize their bus routes, optimize their stops, uh, give better service, all those kinds of things. And so, yeah, we started with that. Uh, actually, it looks like a, a thousand buses across 150 routes daily. And uh, so, you know, every, every, every moment we're, we're capturing data uh, from the buses. And, and so we then combine this with other information to make it look, you know, to see if we can get more useful information. So, you know, there's GPS data, speed data of the buses, how fast they're going. That will give us a, an idea of congestion, right? Uh, stop data, how frequently they're stopping. 
fair data, you know, or which routes are, um, I guess you align the fair with the routes, I'm guessing, right? Uh, then we can also add things like traffic flow data from the traffic lights. Um, and this data comes in XML format. So at 24 key intersections, they have traffic flow data with the lights. There is a, a CCTV monitoring, that's a closed circuit TV monitoring. So real-time video stream. So when something's not quite right, they can actually go and figure out what's happening. You can imagine if you're actually working in the transit system, when the buses suddenly aren't, hap aren't operating on time, you might radio the bus and say, hey, what's going on? Why are you like five minutes behind? The bus driver goes, I don't know, it's just traffic, right? Well, if we can hook, co coordinate this with monitoring systems, you know, that gives us more information. We can make decisions. Should we reroute or something like that, right? Weather conditions, right? Uh, I don't know, but, you know, people who live in Vaughan, for some reason, you guys get the craziest storms. Is that true? I mean, it's like tornado startup over at York University. Um, and then, so it could be like raining and storming and really, really windy on that side for some reason. And it's like clear blue sky over where I live. And I'm, I'm in Richmond Hill. So, you know, isolate, like lo, 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 the, the weather in a localized area is, is very interesting for, uh, for analytics. Not just, oh, today's average weather is a high of, high of 12 and low of two, right? That doesn't really tell us a whole lot. And 60% change in rain. Roadworks maintenance data. Event data, big hockey game. I don't know if they play hockey in Dublin, but uh, you know something like uh, some some big event, maybe a Rolling Stones concert. So we can combine all this information to actually uh, get a better insight as to what's happening to our system. On top of that, what we thought about was you know we could actually make this more interesting by adding other stuff like water management data, and utilities data, environmental monitoring, consumption data, environmental impact like noise pollution. And so what started out as a project to look at bus, uh, bus routes and GPS data, now is about a system that could help us understand how people are using the city's infrastructure, right? So that's the opportunity for big data there. So, so really it's, you know, big data then, why, why big and why now? It, it's really this combination of all this data coming together at once, right? You got external social data, we're all producing data, right? There's mobile data, there's stuff from the cloud, there's stuff from devices, right? And that's just uh, really just all this coming together at once. So we define uh, big data, and I think you saw this in the meetup description, as, as having these four characteristics or four views. You don't have to have all of them, but they typically do exist, right? So you have this concept, of course, of volume, that big data means that there's a lot of it. And, and the technologies now are how do we cost-effectively store and analyze? There's variety, so you saw there's XML data, GPS data, there's you know, tweets, there's social data, there's sentiment analysis, structured, unstructured, multimedia, the, the film stuff, right? There's velocity, so there's data that is not valuable after a few moments, and so we have to act on the moment. And, and so the speed of that mode, that, that data can be, can be a small amount of data, but, it, but it, its depreciation value curve is so steep, you have to act on it quickly, right? It doesn't have to be big, it can just be very, the value could just be very uh, temp uh, temporary, right? And the veracity is more uncertainty, right? Um, what's a good example? Do you, any of you guys think, who thinks that social media is a great source of intelligence? Not very many, a few? Come on, be honest. How many people have arms? Let's try that. How many of you guys have arms? Pull one up, let's get you out. Okay, it's all working, right? Okay, so why would I bring veracity up here? So, okay, so you know, um, What's a good example? So in, how do people follow the US elections? Sentiment. Yeah. <laughs> Sentiment. Okay, so I read this article that, and, and I'm pretty sure it's true, uh, that the Clinton, found, uh, the Clinton campaign had paid a million dollars for people to look at, you know, look at what was being posted about Bernie Sanders and counter those maneuvers. So can you trust that, right? Well, yes and no. Like, I mean, there's some sentiment in there, but there's uncertainty in the data, right? Or you know, you'll find that people who are on Twitter, for example, typically if they're uh, aligned with an organization, that they'll have certain biases, right? They, 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 and so there's the uncertainty. So, so veracity, that's the fourth V, right? So it's having the tools to deal with that uncertainty, 